Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Now I'm going to be starting a new mini series inside of the series for the World of Warcraft bot. We are going to be focusing now on enemies. We're going to be focusing on targeting enemies, moving towards enemies, and attacking enemies. So if you're new here, welcome. We've been working on a World of Warcraft bot and we've implemented a bunch of things at a basic level and now we have a really good framework for attacking, finding and attacking enemy targets. So what we've implemented so far, just to rehash where we're at, is we've implemented a way to track our in-game GPS. We're able to track and turn our character towards that. So we've already implemented a, uh, you know, finding a target and orienting towards a target. So that's going to be critical for enemy, uh, you know, battling enemies. We've also implemented uh, text recognition for our map. So we'll be able to use text recognition to identify what type of enemy we are fighting. That can be useful for trying to figure out what enemies we wanna fight for quests and things like that. We've also implemented uh, spell casting, so we know that we can actually control our character's actions. So if you think about it, we really have all the pieces now for us to move, to attack, to orient, to you know identify what's on screen using template matching. So We've got a lot of really good tools in our toolkit now, and let's use them to automate attacking, finding and attacking enemies. So this is gonna be really excited, really exciting. So if it's your first time here, thank you so much for joining. If you've been watching this series, thank you so much for following along with me. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate all of your comments. Thank you, you guys know that I love responding to comments, so please give me your comments and your feedback, and I wanna hear how you're working on this project too. Now. I'm gonna break this up into a couple of videos, guys, because I think to take all of this and package it into one, you know, one video would be a lot, it'd be long. So the first video I'm gonna focus on right now, giving you the overall picture of how we're gonna do this and, and my idea. Now, if you have other ideas, let me know in the comments. I wanna hear them. I'm just trying to find a way for us to do this programmatically and using AI, computer vision, all that stuff. So I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. Give me your comments if you have other ideas, guys. I'd love to hear from you. In the next video, we'll start actually coding and implementing. So today's video, we're gonna look at a methodology that I've kind of come up with, a strategy. It's gonna be kind of a strategy on how we're gonna do this. So let's, let's look at the strategy. So I have a screenshot from World of Warcraft here. This is kind of right out of the box without any mods or anything. And I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna rely on any mods, so we're gonna Assume that we're only working with the standard game client and the options that are inside of the standard game client. We're not gonna be using any external mods or anything like that. Now, if we wanna find an enemy on the screen, here, here's what we know. Let's look at what we know and let's think about how we can use this stuff. The first thing that we know is that enemies are either red or yellow. So yellow means they're not gonna attack you, obviously. Red means that they are aggressive. So we know that. Another thing that we know is we can identify their location on the screen, not just by the enemy, obviously, like this wolf in this case, but if we enable the, I forget what they're called, those top, those bars on the top, we get the name of the mob and we get its location and we get its health and we get its aggro status. We get yellow or red based on the color of that bar before we attack. We get the name of the mob and we get its location. So there's a lot of information in this bar here that we can use for identifying, orienting, tracking, and attacking. So that's awesome. Another thing that we can use is the enemy health bar down here. Just like we used our health bar, uh, just like we used our green bar there, the pixels there to determine our player's health and heal accordingly, we can figure out the enemy status by using this. Now we can also use this because this is actually a health bar too. So we have two options there. The nice thing is, is that this one's always static. So it's always gonna be in exactly the same spot as long as you don't move that you know, raid frame around. But this one is also going to give us a reliable signal. So that's the first thing that we know. So this is the concept that I've come up with for us to track and, and identify and attack enemies. Let's go through it. Let me go over to the whiteboard now. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you guys is that there's actually a setting that we can use in the standard GUI 
you know, the standard World of Warcraft game client that can actually help us, I think, a little bit. Now, if you'll notice on the left-hand side, the, the Blackrock Wargs health bar is a little bit small. Still readable, still usable, but it's small. And, I, and on the right-hand side, there's a picture of Stormwind Infantry, and that's a much larger text and a much larger health bar. Now, we can actually change that as a setting in the game. So if, if you look at this screenshot here uh, that I took, I found this setting right here, right here, called Larger Nameplates. And this setting will make all of those nameplates and text larger. That's going to make it easier for us to do tech recognition. As you remember, when we downsample and all that stuff, if it's very small text, it can be a little more finicky. So that's going to help us, I think. So let's enable that setting. That's part of the standard game client. So that's in play. Another thing is, is we always we, we want to obviously be able to you know show nameplates. So you're going to want to hit the V key uh, to turn those on. Uh, now the reason the nameplates are so useful is when we hit the tab button in game, we can actually just program find next target is just hitting the tab key, just like we would do in the game. That's how I play. We just hit tab and it'll automatically tab to the next enemy target. And if we use a control tab, that'll tab to the friendly tar next friendly target. So that's a great way for us to easily uh, access and identify targets without having to actually manually put our mouse over them and click on them. We'll be able to almost tab through them and once we have tabbed onto a enemy or a friendly character, we will get a lot of information about that character. So let me pull up another screenshot here. Let's look at how are we going to identify the location of the enemy with relationship to our player. So let me take out my pen here. I'll draw in purple. Let's see how does that show up. That's red. Sorry. All right. So the purple looks pretty good. So let me erase that. All right, so if I draw in purple here, we want to note the distance between our character and the enemy character. Now, what I noticed is, is that as long as the camera is not at a ridiculous distance, close or far away, it's pretty easy to get a, a good estimate based on if we were to take that center location of our screen, which is like somewhere around here, and then we have this distance right here that Delta X that's in front of us. So basically the distance between their health bar and this center point of our screen, that distance will roughly translate to how far away they are from our character. As long as the camera is in a relatively stable position. If you zoom like super far out and then super close, it gets a little bit farther off. I was testing it. But as long as you kind of normalize it in a, let's say a standard location, and we can probably set it up so it, the game will automatically, you know, move to a certain view distance. But as long as you keep that kind of consistent, the game, I think it's very, there's a very strong correlation between how close they are to you and how close that health bar is to the center of the screen. So that's how I think we're gonna, I'm gonna initially estimate distance to the enemy. Because the other, way to, the other way to do it, there's other ways to do it, but it's a little, it can be a little bit tricky if we wanna try to identify where this object is, where our player is, we try to figure out where they are on the ground, and then we try to figure out this distance. This is a little bit tricky, but if we can get a pretty good estimate computationally, you know, using you know, this health bar and a center point on the screen, if we can get that and use that as kind of an estimate, estimated distance, that would be a very efficient way to do it and a very easy way to do it. So I wanna try that. Okay, the next thing is, I wanna figure out obviously where the character is. So, uh, where, or I should say where the enemy is. So the problem is uh, we can use our template matching. And if you remember a template match All right, so template match is going to look for a template and it's going to look for it on the screen. Now, the problem is the enemy name and the health bar is not the same every time. So we can't use the name as like an image for a template match unless, you know, we were just designing this bot to fight just Black Rock invaders for 24 hours a day. You could, in theory, do that, but it probably wouldn't be the best way. But what we can do is if you look at the health bar closely, it's actually composed of a couple of pieces. 
So there's the text, obviously, right? There's the text, and we, and we can use that for our text recognition. There's the red part inside, or the yellow part, which represents the enemy's health. But what is always consistent is the white box part on the outside, okay? So we have the white box inside, and then, of course, we have the, the red on the inside, right? So my idea is the white box can be used to represent the location of that enemy. Now, the, again, the reason we don't want to use the red health bar, the red part is not going to be static. It'll be, it'll be statically full when we start the fight, but as the fight continues, it's going to change and it's got some transparency there. So it's going to, it might potentially be a little bit more confusing to the AI. But if we tell the AI, focus in on this part, so I'm going to highlight it here in green. So this thickness right here, and I'm going to highlight it in green here. I don't know if you can see that well. And the reason we don't want to look at the whole white boxes is we don't want to capture that transparent part, but we want to capture the part that's never going to change. And it's basically either that top or that bottom line. We could slice that out. And if we slice that out and we, and we basically make this our, let's say maybe the top left-hand corner or maybe the center part of that, you know, we basically can estimate the enemy's position right here. Here, I don't know if you can see that. So there's these points, there's a center point. So we could estimate, you know, that that's the position of the enemy uh, horizontally, uh, you know, horizontally on the screen. And then again, our vertical distance, we can estimate by how far away this box is from the center of the screen where our character is standing. And as we saw before, we can use the angle. So once we know the location of that, let me erase all this stuff on the left-hand side. So once we know the location of this box on the screen, let's just pretend the box was over here. I'll just draw one over here. And so let's just say that this is the health box of an enemy that we see that we haven't started fighting yet. Now, if you, just like what we did last time with the GPS tracking diamond, we can get this vector here, let's say to that center point, so we get this vector, and now we can calculate these angles. Sorry, we don't really want this alpha angle. Sorry, let me fix that, I screwed that up. Let me draw that again, guys. So here's this box, this enemy box, here's the red health bar, and we have a vector to that health bar and we want to get this angle alpha here. That angle, how much we have to turn. Once we turn, now that health bar will be straight in front of us. So after turning, the health bar is going to be here. Right? So here's our health bar now. It's right in front of us. And we, and we know how far we have to run based on how close that is to the center of the screen. If it's all the way up on the top here, we'll know that we got to run forward. And once it's within a certain margin of error here, you know, within a certain margin of error here, we'll know that we're in range for either melee or we're in range for maybe, you know, slightly long distance attacks like the Paladin Hammer stuff or whatever. Now for range classes, we may want to intentionally maintain this distance, but we could just set that Delta X to whatever we want. So, and then, so that's all about finding and moving towards the enemy, okay? So, and then let's, let's break down this box a little bit more. So we've got this health box. Again, let's look at the information that we're gonna use to determine stuff about this. I'll draw half of it yellow and half of it red. So again, Based on, we're gonna use the color to determine the type of monster. So we're gonna know yellow means um, you know, neutral or whatever the word is, and red means aggro monster, right? We're gonna use the white. This is gonna be the location, okay? We're gonna use the uh, amount. We're gonna use the amount to get the enemy's health, okay? And up here, we have our text, I'll write this in yellow. We're gonna use this to get the mob info. And as we get more advanced, 
we might have different strategies for fighting different monsters or whatever. But what we can do is just with that one health bar deal, we can look how much information we can extract. We can find the enemy, we can orient towards it, move towards it, identify the type of mob, identify whether it's aggro or not, and attack it and monitor its health. So there's lots of information just from this one little thing here. So that's the strategy that I'm going to employ over the next couple of videos. So I wanted to give you guys the overall picture of what we're going to do so that as we program it, it's going to start make a little bit more sense, hopefully. So I hope you found this strategy interesting. I hope you learned a little bit. If you guys have other ideas or things that I didn't think about, maybe some better way to do this, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll see you in the next video when we start implementing this. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.